Uh, my project was about the Bayesian evaluation of uh, user app choices uh, in Android market. Uh, when uh, users are presented with uh, risk uh, indicators, uh, I worked on this project with uh, Shakti Dar uh, Gopawaram, uh, Sanchari Das, and uh, Gene Camp was my advisor on this project. So as the name of the project suggests, this uh, project is about the security and privacy in Android. So I wanted to briefly like talk about uh, the security and privacy model uh, in Android, especially uh, when like users are involved. So the classic model that we had uh, was when uh, users wanted to install an app, uh, the permissions would be shown, as you can see in the like top right picture, uh, all of the uh, permissions would be shown and uh, the user would uh, accept or reject it. If they rejected a permission, so they wouldn't be able to install the app. Then the new, uh, new models came in that they tried to, uh, I don't know, like kind of fine grain uh, the use of each of the permissions. So for example, when the app wants to use your location, wants to use their uh, camera, it would ask you for that. And uh, when they would ask you, you can just not allow them to use it, but it would mean that you cannot use that feature. Uh, also, there are like uh, new like proposals to use, to use machine learning to make sure that a, a feature is not being used like maliciously, which is not really our focus because we are mainly uh, like interested in uh, user-centered privacy because we believe that the user should be the uh, one that like decide about the, their own privacy and security. So uh, the, we see a problem with the permissions model in general when users want to like decide based on that. Uh, the first and uh, probably the most important one is that users don't understand permissions well. Like uh, when we tell them uh, this uh, app wants to like use your wireless, do they exactly know what that means? Do they know that it's only internet or do they know that there are other users on the same wireless network that might be able to like see something or you might, might be able to send something to them? So uh, it just means that not all users are tech savvy. They don't really mean what these uh, permissions mean, regardless of how much you communicate that to them. Also, uh, permissions themselves are a bit uh, confusing, I want to say, because I develop Android uh, applications myself. They, t they can be very, very confusing. It, it just, uh, there are multiple research projects that show that even developers probably don't understand it well because they, uh, they tend to like put extra permissions when they're, they just don't need it in their app. For example, they would uh, like, uh, ask for read and write access to accounts instead of just read it, uh, read access. You know, they, they could just have done with only the read access, but they asked for all the access to the accounts. And also there's another thing. Uh, users are not aware, aware that how fine grained the permissions are. For example, uh, the, uh, the app would ask for location. Users might not even know there are two different uh, location permissions in there. Android market, both coarse location and fine location. They will just not know about it. So it's not like, maybe they don't even know what they're allowing. But then uh, there are another set of problems with the runtime permission seeking. For, uh, like when the user decides to not allow that uh, permission to go through for a feature, they've already installed the app. So if the app is malicious, they already can use like other features in the app, you know? And also users don't tend to remove the app. Like there are many apps on my own phone that I have not used in a while, but I'm not removing them. Like you never like go through your phone and be like, oh, you know what? I'm not using this app anymore. Let's remove this app. Uh, and it gets worse because all the side channels are exposed to these apps. So when, many apps that just like nowadays many apps just have the uh, get the location even when the app is not open uh, as a default in their android section which is very bad um so for that we decided to see okay if users do not understand how we're communicating the the, the security and privacy to them 
uh, would users care if we communicate it better in a way that they understood it better? And uh, we decided to like think about how we can uh, communicate it better. And uh, our proposed solution was to uh, communicate privacy and security risks uh, with better models, with the uh, models that fit their mental models better and communicate it in their runtime. So if they decide they don't want it, they don't have to go through and like remove an app. Uh, to do this, uh, we developed uh, an alternate Play Store and we tried to like make it as close as possible to the actual Play Store. And we decided to show the security and uh, security ratings and privacy ratings using Padlock that uh, other research projects have shown that uh, these padlocks uh, fit the mental model of users of risk and uh, risk, security, privacy, and all that. Just to mention, uh, we fetched these uh, privacy and security ratings from another project called Privacy Grade by, uh, by MIT. And uh, what we're arguing in this project is not if these uh, ratings are accurate or not. We just want to say if there is a rating there, would people care and tend to like gravitate towards what is communicated to them as a more secure app? However, we use the real uh, research project because it, if we just randomize and like assign some random uh, security rating, then people come in and see, I don't know, like for example, Gmail has a, I don't know, like two, two out of five security rating, they would probably uh, like uh, lose trust in the research project. So basically we just uh, fetched the uh, security ratings from privacy grade and uh, they graded from A to D. Uh, we translated to one to five locks, five being the most secure. And uh, we asked users, uh, not users, 60 participants to install four apps from each of the four categories that are mentioned here, flashlight, weather, photos, and games. Uh, I'll describe why we chose these categories in a, in a bit. And we asked them to install just four apps from these categories, uh, just to see if, uh, if they're different, if they gravitate towards uh, more secure apps. Uh, the participants were from a local farmers market and public library, so we tried to like diversify as, as much as we could. And the only thing that uh, I, I want to mention is that we handed them the device, so they're basically not installing it on their own device. Uh, it was just a 15 minute, uh, 15 minute experiment. They would install, and then then we will like reset everything and hand it to the next person. Uh, uh, to compare our Play Store, uh, the pictures, as you can see, like. Uh, the difference is basically having those like ratings, as you can see, for example, Google Calendar had the perfect uh, score of like five uh, padlocks. And it also the same in the description page. The only, uh, the only other difference that we made is that we added a permissions button uh, because we wanted to see how many of these participants actually look at the permissions before installing. Uh, we, we're going to report on it later on. Uh, so, when, so by this, we uh, asked the participants to install and then it got to the point that we want to analyze our uh, results. Uh, so the most common experimental approach I, I can say right now is the A-B testing. You have a control group, you have a group that uh, uses your experiment and then you just compare them. Uh, but there's another uh, analysis, another form of analysis called Bayesian analysis that uh, we do in this paper. Uh, in the next slides, I want to talk about why we believe uh, Bayesian analysis is uh, better for this kind of experiment and maybe a lot of other experiments uh, and the, why A-B testing might not be as good as it is common, you know. So uh, first, let's talk about the like disadvantages of uh, A-B testing and p-values in general. So uh, one of the main issues with A-B testing is that it assumes representativeness of the population. Uh, and also it assumes like certain distributions. You know, uh, not always you have those distributions and not always you can have a very representative population. So by that, like if you don't have it and you use A-B testing, like right from the beginning, it's not gonna be as accurate as you want it to be. Also, 
A-B testing does not build on previous knowledge. Like for example, in our experiment, we are trying to like experiment on Android market. Android market has been around for like what, 15 years, 20 years at least. Uh, and uh, every day, many, many, many users use it. So the fact that we just don't use any of that and we just come up with a control group, I don't know how many participants we're gonna have in control group, but like for example, for us, it could be like another 60 participants. It's not comparable really. And to make things worse, uh, the Journal of Basic and Applied to Social Psychology has banned using p-values. It's just, they mentioned in their website that uh, we just believe it's not accurate for uh, doing these kind of experiments that it's like interventional experiments. You bring in something you wanna see what changes it has made. Uh, and I thought that what are the pros of Bayesian analysis that uh, we decided to use it for this? First of all, it works with all distributions because it just, what it does is try, it tries to compare the entire distribution, not just the mean of the sample that we have. The other very good thing that really benefits the, the science of the, the research is that it enables sharing of the data. When you just use the mean of the a sample, you, you just have a number. But when you uh, use the entire distribution, another person can do a similar experiment and would just be able to compare the whole thing with your results because you can uh, share the entirety of that data. Uh, and because of the same thing, it enables comparison with the real world. When we use Bayesian analysis, then I can go ahead and use the information and data that is already available in the uh, Android market, in the Android marketplace. That, uh, like we have everything. We have the number of downloads, we have the ratings, we have everything there. You can just take advantage of that. Uh, so because we are going to use Bayesian analysis, I want to like briefly talk about how to read a Bayesian chart, at least like this Bayesian chart, because when you do a Bayesian analysis, there are multiple charts that are generated, but we decided to use this one. Uh, there is a region of practical equivalence, uh, which, uh, which is exactly uh, what it is, is that it's the uh, part of the chart that uh, is practically the two distributions that you're giving them are equivalent. We use zero. I don't know if you can see the like dotted line that is on the zero, uh, but the zero is exactly like the null hypothesis as we have in like uh, p-value testing. Uh, when the zero is above a certain uh, percentage of the region that we want to talk about, uh, we will accept the null hypothesis. If it's below that, we will reject it. Which uh, again, just like p-value, it is usually at five percent in this area too. Uh, so the interval that we are interested in here is that uh, the interval that is marked with a black bar underneath the chart. If you can see that, it means that our zero line is at like around eleven percent of that region. Which means that, for example, this example uh, that you can see here. Uh, we have to accept null hypothesis. Uh, so before I get to our results, our actual results, I wanted to talk about our research questions that we had uh, and why we ch chose those four categories. First, we chose flashlight category because the apps that would show in the results of our uh, experiment, all of them had the same perfect uh, security rating. It meant that we wanted to see if our participants are representative of the actual market. Because if all of the ratings are the same, basically ratings are not uh, like changing people's opinions, right? So if all of them are the same, we want to see that the distributions are kind of the same between our experiment and the, uh, and the Android marketplace. In the next two research questions, uh, then there are different security ratings in the different categories. For one of the categories, we just use a category that all of the apps do the same. In the, for example, weather. All of the weather apps are gonna show you the I don't know, temperature, if it's windy, is it not? So we wanna see uh, if all the functionalities are the same, would this uh, different security ratings lead to different, uh, different distributions? Uh, and also uh, in the research question three, we, we choose apps that 
have different functionalities. Photos, games, we want to see what will happen there. Are we going to still make a difference or not? So for the flashlight category, as you can see, like the, the left is the data that we have that uh, are the uh, number of downloads for each of the apps in the flashlight category in our experiment versus what they had in the actual Play Store. Uh, and you can see in the uh, right that zero is in like 26%, which means that we have to accept the line hypothesis, which is like the two distributions are the same. Which to, uh, the same is a bad uh, uh, phrasing of it. Basically, the two distributions are indistinguishable, which means that when that all the uh, scores are perfect, the, the participants and the Android marketplace are acting the same which means that our population is representative, our marketplace and population are representative of the actual market. However, when we look at the same uh, chart uh, for uh, weather category, we can see that zero falls around 4.6%, uh, which means that we can reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the two distributions are distinguishable. And uh, the same thing happens with photos category, around 3.9% and the games category around 4.2%. Uh, the other result that, uh, uh, as I said, just shows that having the security ratings are making a difference in the in users uh, uh, like choices, uh, and at least in our, uh, in our participants. Uh, but before I close it out, uh, I wanted to mention some interesting findings that was kind of like kind of side findings of our uh, uh, research. For example, uh, the permission button that I showed you, uh, only 7% of the times it, it has been like clicked on it uh, and participants had looked at the, uh, the permissions. Uh, previous research uh, had found like 17% and 13% for the same thing. Also, if you had looked at the uh, weather category, uh, the most famous apps uh, app does not have a perfect score although the rest of them have. So it kind of shows that, and it was the same, uh, like it was the most famous app in the, in the actual player store too, which means that uh, when an app is very famous, people might not really care about the security of it. And also the next thing is that the weighted average of user ratings, those like the stars that are shown in the actual marketplace, in our uh, experiment, after like uh, participants decided to like choose other kind of apps, more secure apps, it kind of stayed the same uh, compared to what uh, users used uh, in the actual Play Store, which was kind of the same. It means that there's not always a trade-off between how happy uh, users are with their apps and the security of the apps. Just to summarize, uh, we say the permissions model has a shortcoming, so we might need to communicate the uh, security and privacy better. Uh, A-B testing is not always good for all the experiments, especially when we have the data available in the real world and we want to compare it with that data. Uh, and the Bayesian analysis has so many advantages that we can use. Uh, many different kind of comparisons which make it more accurate because you can look at it from different angles. And uh, also like a good advantage for the science of the thing, this, uh, the researchers can they share the data of the of their uh, research, and also the the last one, which is the main finding of our exper uh, our research, is that adding the security in, uh, indicators would make a difference that participants would care about it and choose uh, more secure apps. Uh, this is the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you all for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have.